Is this happening to you? Then you're in the right place for video game training. Hello and welcome along, my name is Azavar or Azza. In this video, we're gonna go from being a trainee ninja to a master ninja. I hope you're ready for the journey. I'm massively excited for the Ninja Gaiden HD collection, so much so that I put this video together just a couple of days before its release. Unfortunately, I did not get early access to the Ninja Gaiden HD collection, so I've put this beginner's guide together using footage from the PlayStation 3 versions of the games. However, the information is still relevant and important, so let's dive into the ninja training. First of all, we'll go over some basics and reuse movement. You have a standard attack and a heavy attack. Using a heavy attack, you'll be able to break your enemy's guard, leaving them open for you to attack them. You can put together combos by combining your standard attacks with heavy attacks. Each weapon will have different combos, but generally speaking, the combos will go something like this. Standard, then heavy attack. Two standards, then heavy attack. Three standards, then heavy attack. You can also launch your enemies up into the air. To do this with the dragon sword, you would press standard attack and then heavy attack. Or you could press forward and heavy attack together, and that will also launch them into the air. You also have the ability to block, and mastering the art of blocking will save your life many times. Whilst holding down block, you can also press a direction to move Ryu in that direction. This is called the reverse wind technique. This is useful for a number of different reasons. One is to close the gap between you and your enemy. You may need to get over to them really fast and finish them off, so you can use it for that. Or if there's an explosion or some magic being cast, you can also use it to get out of there and get to safety. Another time where it might be good to use the reverse wind technique is if you're blocking and then your block is eventually broken. Whilst holding down block and then pressing a direction away from the enemy, it will mean that you dodge out of the way of their next attack. Whereas if you just kept holding down block and then your block was broken, it would mean that you actually receive the attack and take damage. If an enemy hits you whilst you're holding down block and you press your standard attack right after blocking the enemy's attack, Ryu will perform a counter attack which usually does massive damage and it can get you out of a bind. And with certain battles, I'd actually recommend using a counter attack to win the fight. You also have the ability to run on walls and you can also chain wall runs together to get up to places that you normally couldn't get up to. Most of the time you'll find secrets and hidden items in places like this. So make sure to explore and look around for ledges that you may be able to get up to. And if you see two walls that are quite close together, you may be able to ninja flip between one wall and the other to climb tall structures. You'll also be collecting something called Essence on this game. You've got yellow, blue and red Essence. Yellow Essence is this game's money, blue Essence is health, and red Essence is Ninpo. Ninpo is essentially magic or ninjutsu. You'll get access to different types of Ninpo along the way. Some Ninpo is used to protect Ryu, for example firebirds that spin around him. Some Ninpo will shoot forwards, and other types will do massive area damage taking out multiple enemies at the same time. Also, if you kill an enemy using a Ninpo attack, there's a higher chance that that enemy will drop a Ninpo essence. So don't be too afraid to keep using your Ninpos. You'll be able to spend your yellow essence at the shop, which is run by Muramasa. At Muramasa's shop, you can buy things like health items and weapon upgrades. I'd massively recommend stocking up on health potions and health items when you are at a shop. At some points in the game, you might need to blast through loads of health potions, especially on the boss fights. In Ninja Gaiden 3, Razor's Edge, you'll get no healing items. You'll mostly be using a meditation technique to restore your health, and you can also use your Ninpo attacks to restore your health as well. Next, we're going to talk about the ultimate technique, which is essentially holding down the heavy attack, charging up, and then letting go of heavy attack. You've got a level 1 ultimate technique and a level 2 ultimate technique. Level 1, Ryu will glow a blue colour, and level 2, Ryu will glow a red colour. Essentially, the ultimate technique will absolutely destroy any enemy that it connects with. You do have to make sure that it does connect with the enemy though, otherwise it will leave you open to attack. You can also absorb essence to speed up the charge of the ultimate technique. Whilst charging the ultimate technique, if Ryu absorbs one essence, it will instantly put him to a level 1 ultimate technique, and if he absorbs two essence, it will instantly put him at level two. However, just keep in mind that if you absorb the essence to charge up your ultimate technique, the essence that you use to do that actually loses its value. For example, if you used a blue essence to speed up your ultimate technique, you wouldn't actually recover any HP for picking up the blue essence. Same for the red essence for Ninpo. Once again, if you absorbed a red essence to speed up your ultimate technique, you wouldn't recover an additional Ninpo spell. 
When absorbing the yellow essence for an ultimate technique charge, Ryu will only gain 20% of that money's value. There is a way to make enemies drop more yellow essence and here's how. Three times the amount of yellow essence will be dropped if you kill an enemy with a level 1 ultimate technique. Seven times the amount of yellow essence will be dropped if you kill an enemy with a level 2 ultimate technique. Killing an enemy with a combo of at least 20 will increase the amount of yellow essence dropped. Equipping certain accessories like the Armlet of Benediction will increase the amount of yellow essence absorbed. If you're aiming to bag some higher combos in order to try and get some extra yellow essence or money, a tactic that you could try is using shurikens. Now shurikens don't really do much damage at all, but you can use them if there's a little bit of distance between you and your enemy and you want to keep a combo going. For example you could kill one enemy but your next enemy is on the opposite side of the room. If that is the case you could use shurikens to attack your enemy from afar whilst making your way over to them. Quick question, which of the games in this series is your favourite? My personal favourite is Ninja Gaiden 2, make sure to let me know in the comments. You get a large range of weapons to fight with, both melee weapons and ranged. You can choose from weapons like the Dragon Sword, the Lunar Staff, Nunchucks, Great Swords, a Wooden Sword, Double Swords, and loads more. You also get ranged weapons such as Shurikens, Bow and Arrows, Windmill Shuriken, even an underwater spear gun. Whilst in combat, one of the worst things that you can possibly do is get surrounded by a bunch of enemies. If you find yourself surrounded, the best thing to do is to try and create some space between you and your enemies. There's a few things that you can do that will help you out. One of those is the Guillotine Throw. To do this you want to run and jump towards an enemy whilst pressing the standard attack at the same time as pressing the jump button. As long as you've pressed this whilst running towards the enemy, you'll grab them and throw them. Another move that you can do that may help you out is called the Azuna Ninja Drop. This will juggle the enemy up in the air and then you'll drop them down to the ground and do massive damage. First of all you'll need to launch the enemy up into the air. You can do this either by pressing standard attack and then heavy attack or you can press heavy attack and a direction at the same time. Whilst you're in the air you'll need to press the standard attack three times and then the heavy attack and the last button on that combo will be the Azuna Ninja drop. This move looks really cool and it will usually finish off your enemy. Another thing that you can do if surrounded by enemies is try using a smoke bomb. Sometimes a smoke bomb will buy you a little bit of time to get some space. Another really useful technique that you can use is called the flying swallow. With this attack you want to run and jump towards your enemy and whilst up in the air press your heavy attack. This move can only be done with the dragon sword. This will make Ryu do a flying attack towards the enemy, a lot of the time cutting off their heads. The flying swallow is really useful against groups of enemies because it gives you some space and time away from the group and also allows you to follow up with this attack. On Ninja Gaiden 1 there's something called a fiend challenge. In some areas you'll get attacked by waves and waves of enemies. If you can survive and kill all of these enemies you'll be rewarded with an item. Ninja Gaiden 2 brings a few extra things to the table, mainly something called the obliteration technique. And this obliteration technique is essentially a finishing move that you'll do to your enemies. On Ninja Gaiden 2 you can cut off the limbs of your enemies, and this will send them into a crazed state. They'll try to kill Ryu no matter the cost, even if it's their own lives. If you find yourself up against a ninja where you've cut off their arm or their leg, they'll try to grab and pin down Ryu whilst blowing themselves up in order to try and take you out. This is where the obliteration technique comes in. Before they get a chance to grab you, make sure to head up to them and use your heavy attack to use the obliteration technique. This move is actually really fun to do and the camera angle usually changes whilst you're doing it. It shows Ryu performing an execution, for example, cutting off their heads. You also briefly get to play as different characters, such as Ayane, Kasumi, and Rachel. Each character has their own unique playstyle, so it might take you a little bit of time to adjust to each character. For example, Rachel is really good at hunting fiends, as she is a fiend hunter, but she's not the most agile character, as she's not a ninja. And now Ayane arrives to deliver Ryu an important message. She asks Ryu if he's pressed like and subscribe on this video. Ryu quickly realises that he hasn't yet, so he sets off to complete the task. Make sure to listen to Ayane's advice and press like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to make some more Ninja Gaiden content. I'd happily make some more Ninja Gaiden videos if you would like me to. So if you do, definitely drop a comment and smash that like button. And now your journey from a trainee ninja to a master ninja is complete. Good luck out there and don't forget your ninja training. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care. <laughs> You're gonna have to bear with me a moment. What the hell? <laughs> oh my God. Go.